developing this app, our goal was to extract all the data related to the quiz and move it into the web platform so that a teacher could change it without having to change the app itself. Have we accomplished this goal? Well, we have moved all the question data, the answers, but right now the images themselves are still stored inside the app. Right here we see in the media drawer all four of the pictures are there, and if we were to delete these from the app, the app would no longer work. But we don't want these pictures stored in the app. We want them stored in a web database so that the teacher can change them. So one of the enhancements we're going to make right now is we're going to remove these pictures from here and we're going to move them to a database. We're going to use tinypic.com as our image server for this application. Then we're going to take the URLs associated with each of those pictures and we're going to put those picture URLs inside the database. That way, if a teacher ever wanted to change one of the pictures, she could change it directly in the database without having to go inside the app. So let's have a look at how this is done. So the first step will be to go to the media drawer and download these four images into our PC. So all I, to do that, all I do is click on each of these images in turn and click this download my computer. And now you can see that these four images have been downloaded to the downloads folder of my PC. Here I am at tinypic.com, which we are going to use as our image server. I already have a free account established on tinypic.com, but if you do not, you will need to create one for this application. After uh, signing into the app, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the four images that we had created previously and upload them into tinypic.com. Here are the four pictures now that have been uploaded into this image server. And what we're going to do now is click on each of these and we're going to locate the URL that can be used for uh, doing uh, layouts inside of a web page. Uh, this one looks good. And we're going to embed these into our Firebase database so that we can access these files from the database. Now that we have all four of the pictures stored in tinypic.com, we can take the URLs for those pictures and load them into our Firebase database. We could use the existing picture ID tags and put the URLs right here, but sometime down the road we may want to go back to using numerical references for the pictures. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to add a URL field to each of the existing records. Okay, I've got the first one loaded here. I'm going to pause the video while I load the other two URLs for the other two questions. So now I've gone ahead and added the TinyPic URLs to each of the questions. As a reminder, we had four separate pictures that we had saved, but we only implemented three of the questions in this particular version of the app, so we're only using three of the pictures. Back in our code, we have to make some minor modifications to our question structure to add in the URL. We're now going to add getter and setter methods for this new URL. We see that the uh, code generator has added the getter and setter methods, which I'm just going to move to where the other ones are. Now we need to go back to our main quiz activity and modify the code there to make use of the new URL when we display each question. Inside the display question method, we've already gone ahead and turned off the old way of displaying the picture, which used the numerical references with the pictures being installed inside the app. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of code here now to display the pictures using the URLs that we've stored in the database. Displaying a URL as an image inside Android is a little bit more challenging than you might think. We're going to make use of a special library called the Ion Library to help us in this endeavor. We're going to go over to File, Project Structure. We're going to import a library called the Ion Library. It's a little hard to find. So we're going to click on Dependencies and we're going to hit this little plus button and we're going to say we're looking for a library and then we're going to search for ION and this guy named Koshik Dotto developed this ION library so we're going to bring that in and we're going to hit OK once we do that the Gradle project will resync and bring that library in and we'll be able to use it uh, for our code Okay, the Gradle task is finished now, and we should be able to have access to the ION library capabilities. The main thing we loaded that library for is we want to be able to take a string URL and generate a regular URL and then use that to load our image view. Once we have the ION library loaded, the code that we need to take a URL and insert it into a image view becomes fairly straightforward. First we're going to fetch the string that we have stored for this particular question and we're going to save it as this URL variable here, local variable, and then we're going to use that local variable and we're going to add this uh, library function from the ION library to take that string and then fetch the picture and put it into the image view picture which is tied to the layout. Let's talk about this library call for a second. This placeholder defines what image is shown when we first uh, start up. This uh, error field here defines what image is shown if uh, the image we're looking for is not available. And finally, here is the image that we want to load in the load field. Okay, it's time for us to run the app now. Here the app loads and you see there's a slight delay before the first picture loads and what's happening there is that it's taking some time for the app to go out to the internet, get the image and load it in. Likewise there's going to be a similar delay. Uh, you can see it just for a split second there. Uh, one other interesting thing to note here is that the second time I go through you see that there is no delay and I suspect what's happening here is that Android is caching the images once they're received so that going forward it can access them instantly. But overall we're going to declare success here and uh, congratulations if you got your app to work. So it looks like everything is working now but before we leave one word of caution regarding tinypic.com it is a free image server and whenever there's something that is for free there are always restrictions for TinyPic, for example, if your image is not touched at least once every 90 days, TinyPic will remove the image. Therefore, if you want a truly permanent place to store your images, you will have to pay for your own image server. Mm -hmm.